What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping into Destiny 2 Season of the Splicer to take a look at all of the new legendary and exotic weapons that have been added for the season. So we'll look at new exotics and catalysts as well as all of the new Vault of Glass weapons. We'll be looking at potential roles for these as well. Then of course we have the new activity weapons for override, ritual rewards, as well as world drops, and new weapons that have been added to the playlists in Season 14. So we'll break them all down in this video guys, and we'll leave timestamps to each of the different sections down below and if you enjoy this one a rating really does help us out on the channel but otherwise let's get into it. We're going to start out with the new Vault of Glass weapons inside of this video but I will have timestamps down below for the different loot pools and weapons that you may be looking for. With the return of Vault of Glass of course that brings the Fatebringer. It is going to drop in the kinetic slot and we can see it's an adaptive frame 140 rpm hand cannon. All of these VOG weapons will be coming with random rolls so you can get things like Hammer Forged Rifling and Accurized Rounds, which is always good. But in terms of traits, we have Rewind Rounds. When this weapon's magazine is empty, it refills from reserves based on the number of hits. Interesting new bonus there. But it also has the option of Killing Wind, as well as Tunnel Vision, where reloading after defeating a target greatly increases target acquisition and aim downside speed for a short duration. Let us know what you think of these new bonuses, but then we have Osmosis, as well as Thresh, and Explosive Payload in that first trait slot, with Eye of the Storm, Kill Clip, Frenzy, Opening Shot, as well as Firefly in that second trait slot, so that's rolling out on a kinetic weapon. And then there's also the new bonus Adrenaline Junkie, where grenade final blows grant bonus damage and handling for a moderate duration. There will also be time lost versions of Vault of Glass weapons that'll be available in the harder difficulties later on. Currently in the database we can't see exactly what the benefit of that's going to be, whether it'll be a mod slot or something else, but otherwise the perk rolls and things like that are identical between the two versions. Praetith's Revenge is returning as a kinetic right here, and so it's a rapid fire frame sniper rifle, pretty similar to what we had in Destiny 1, and in the trait slots you can get Quick Draw, Osmosis, Rewind Rounds once again, as well as No Distractions, Moving Target, or Feeding Frenzy. And then the second slot can get Adrenaline Junkie, Opening Shot, Frenzy, High Impact Reserves, Kill Clip, and Firefly. It's pretty cool how they're mixing things up with random rolls and stuff like that, but it is possible to get pretty much the original flavor of all of these weapons as far as we can tell. The Vision of Confluence is going to be a Solar Energy Scout Rifle, of course a Precision Frame, and for traits we can get Tunnel Vision, Wellspring, Surplus, Rewind Rounds, Killing Wind, and Zen Moment, and that's in the first slot, with the second slot seeing Firefly, Kill Clip, Disruption Break, Frenzy, Thresh, or Full Auto Trigger System. So once again we'll be able to get that very original flavor for the Vision of Confluence. There is also Found Verdict, an Arc Energy Shotgun in the aggressive frame, and for traits we have Rewind Rounds, Surplus, Unrelenting, Slide Shot, Auto Loading Holster, and Full Auto Trigger System, with the second perk slot seeing Demolitionist, 1-2 Punch, Opening Shot, Frenzy, Killing Wind, or Vorpal Weapon. So once again it's going to be a pretty solid weapon. There's also Corrective Measure, the Machine Gun coming with Void Damage. It is an adaptive frame, and for traits we have Surplus, Feeding Frenzy, Rewind Rounds, Subsistence, Demolitionist, and Dynamic Sway Reduction. Rewind Rounds could be a pretty interesting one on that. We've also got Adrenaline Junkie, Fresh, One for All, Tap the Trigger, High Impact Reserves and Firefly's potential second slot bonuses. And finally there is the He's and Vengeance, an aggressive frame solar rocket launcher. First trait slot has Tracking, Quick Draw, Autoloading Holster, Impulse Amplifier, Surplus and Overflow, with the second slot seeing Vorpal Weapon, Lasting Impression, Demolitionist, Wellspring, Thresh and Cluster Bomb. Currently for the Vault of Glass we don't see the Praetorium Foil listed in the database so not sure if that's a weapon we're going to get access to but we'll have to see after launch. Now though let's briefly talk about exotics and of course we know that Vex Mythoclast is returning. The exotic bonus is Timeless Mythoclast and the weapon fires a single bolt with each trigger pull but it also has Temporal and Limiter and defeating targets builds stacks of overcharge. Whenever we're fully overcharged we're able to switch the firing mode on the weapon and an alternate firing mode you can hold the trigger to charge up and fire more powerful linear fusion shots. So that's pretty cool. It also gets arrowhead break, volatile battery, and hand laid stock. And then of course, there is a catalyst for the weapon. And this is calculated balance, where higher stacks of overcharge increase stability on the weapon. So that one's working a little bit differently to what we saw in Destiny 1. Give us your thoughts about it down below. But we also have the Cryos the Seer 77k, and this has LN2 burst with variable trigger, where you can press and release to fire individual shots, or hold to fire a charge shot when liquid cooling is active. 
And final blows with the weapon enable a charged shot for a short duration, and targets hit by the shot are instantly frozen at the cost of the weapon's entire magazine. Then the catalyst for the weapon is cold efficiency, and shattering a frozen target refills the weapon's magazine from reserves. That one is earnable via a quest, but we also have the introduction of the Deathbringer Catalyst this season, and this will drop in playlist activities randomly. And the perk is Dead Weight, which increases how quickly Dark Descent reaches its full potential, so it essentially gives the weapon a bit of a buff right there. Now for weapons that we're going to see dropping in Override, as well as seasonal activities, we have the Chroma Rush, a kinetic auto rifle in a rapid fire frame. Some of these weapons look pretty cool, and we'll find these via the kind of season vendor and loot unlocks associated with the new mode. It can get heating up, a new bonus where final blows with the weapon increase accuracy and stability while improving vertical recoil, but also moving target, feeding frenzy, tunnel vision, dynamic sway reduction, subsistence. And then in the second trade slot, adrenaline junkie, tap the trigger, kill clip, bresh, rampage, and wellspring. The Ignition Code is a new kinetic grenade launcher in the lightweight frame, once again from Season of the Splicer activities, and trade slots include, in the first slot, Field Prep, Slide Shot, Surplus, Ambitious Assassin, Quick Draw, and Lead from Gold, but the second slot gets a perk called Danger Zone, and the blast radius of the weapon increases when surrounded by combatants. It can also roll Thresh, Vorpal Weapon, Demolitionist, One for All, and Frenzy, so that could be a pretty interesting weapon as well. But there is the Farewell Kinetic Sidearm right here in a lightweight frame. It can roll Tunnel Vision, Heating Up, Rangefinder, Full Auto Trigger System, Subsistence, and Moving Target in the first slot, with Frenzy, Adrenaline Junkie, Unrelenting, Multi-Kill Clip, Thresh, and Vorpal Weapon in the second slot. But we also have the Grid Skipper Energy Pulse Rifle coming with Void Damage in a Rapid Fire Frame and it can roll Tunnel Vision, Killing Wind, Moving Target, Heating Up, Firmly Planted and Slideways in the first slot, with the second slot seeing Frenzy, Adrenaline Junkie, Thresh, High Impact Reserves, Multi-Kill Clip, and Snapshot Sights. The couple of weapons that come from the Season Pass include the Sojourner's Tail, a Solar Shotgun in a Precision Frame, and this can roll Rapid Hit, Tunnel Vision, Threat Detector, Autoloading Holster, Quick Draw, and Moving Target in the first slot, with Killing Wind, Frenzy, Adrenaline Junkie, Dragonfly, Surrounded, and Opening Shot in the second slot. The other weapon for the Season Pass is the Shattered Cypher, a Void Machine Gun in a Rapid Fire Frame, and it can roll Tunnel Vision, Heating Up, Field Prep, Under Pressure, Slideways as well as Auto Loading Holster in the first slot, with Unrelenting, Snapshot, Surrounded, Zen Moment, Rampage, and Adrenaline Junkie in the second slot. And so that covers the Season Activity and Season Pass weapons right there. But up next we have some new Nightfall weapons for the season, and the first one is the Hung Jury, of course returning from Destiny 1. It's a kinetic precision frame scout rifle, and for D2 is able to roll Subsistence, Moving Target, Rapid Hit, Heating Up, Bottomless Grief, and Surplus in the first slot, with Adrenaline Junkie, Box Breathing, Explosive Payload, Wellspring, One for All, and Firefly in the second trait slot. So some pretty nice potential rolls on that one, definitely a Firefly one could be pretty cool. Being from Nightfalls, they will also get Adept versions that can slot the Adept mods. The next one though is the Azumi RR4, a Solar Sniper Rifle, and this is Adaptive Frame, with the first trade slot seeing Triple Tap, Bottomless Grief, Lead from Gold, Snapshot Sights, Clown Cartridge, and Killing Wind, and that second trade slot able to roll Adrenaline Junkie, Explosive Payload, Vorpal Weapon, High Impact Reserves, Demolitionist, and Dragonfly. The Fusion Rifle, the Plug 1, is an Arc Fusion Rifle in a precision frame, and this one can roll Heating Up, Under Pressure, Bottomless Grief, Killing Wind, Feeding Frenzy, and Quick Draw in the first slot, with a new bonus called Cornered in the second slot, where faster charge time or draw time when surrounded by combatants. So obviously also able to roll out on bows. And then you can get Adrenaline Junkie, Kickstart, where you gain bonus damage and charge rate during a slide after sprinting for a short duration. And then it can get Reservoir Burst as well, and when the battery is full, your next burst deals additional damage and causes enemies to explode on death, with Backup Plan and Thresh as other bonuses for that second slot. So a couple of new bonuses right there. And those three weapons for the Nightfall should be on a weekly rotation like we saw in the previous season. Now though, let's take a look at Iron Banner, because there are going to be a couple of new weapons available. And initially there is Archon's Thunder, a new high impact frame solar machine gun. This one's able to roll Mulligan, Field Prep, Rangefinder, Quick Draw, Killing Wind and Surplus in the first trade slot, with Elemental Capacitor, Thresh, Snapshot Sights, 
Rampage, as well as Iron Gaze and Iron Grip in the second slot. These ones kind of remind me of the sort of Rise of Iron style weapons we had. There is the Reese Walker Kinetic Shotgun in a lightweight frame right here, and it can get slideways, hipfire grip, quick draw, surplus, firmly planted, or Eye of the Storm in the first slot, with the second slot able to roll Iron Reach, Killing Wind, Unrelenting, Vorpal Weapon, Demolitionist, and Swashbuckler. There are a couple of additional ones they've thrown into the pool for the season, so we've got Finite Impactor, an adaptive frame arc hand cannon, this one able to get under pressure, no distractions, firmly planted, heating up, killing wind and slideways in the first slot, with Eye of the Storm, Iron Grip, Iron Reach, Multi-Kill Clip, One for All, and Elemental Capacitor in the second slot. They've also returned the occluded Finality sniper rifle right here, it's an arc aggressive frame sniper, and it can get no distractions, auto-loading holster, under pressure, surplus, mulligan, and snapshot sights in the first slot, with Demolitionist, Iron Reach, Elemental Capacitor, Eye of the Storm, Vorpal Weapon, and Opening Shot in the second slot. Then Bungie have actually gone ahead and added a new weapon for Trials of Osiris, and it says it's earned by completing challenges in Trials of Osiris, but it's the Sheora's Wrath Void Precision Frame Submachine Gun. This one's able to get Killing Wind, Tunnel Vision, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Heating Up, and Quick Draw in the first slot, with Celerity, Adrenaline Junkie, Kill Clip, Tap the Trigger, and Snapshot Sights in that second slot. Here we have a few playlist weapons, so from the Crucible we can get the Survivor's Epitaph, a new kinetic precision frame hand cannon, and these ones do tend to come with significant perk pools, but you can get Tunnel Vision, Heating Up, Firmly Planted, Quick Draw, Surplus, Outlaw, Feeding Frenzy, Ambitious Assassin, Killing Wind, Slide Shot, Subsistence, or Rapid Hit in the first slot, and then there is Moving Target, Adrenaline Junkie, Frenzy, Osmosis, Eye of the Storm, Snapshot Sights, Wellspring, Multi-Kill Clip, Thresh, One for All, High Impact Reserves, and Kill Clip available in the second slot. The Empty Vessel is going to drop from completing strikes and earning rank up packages at the Vanguard. This is a new solar lightweight frame grenade launcher. It is able to roll Quick Draw, Surplus, Genesis, Feeding Frenzy, Autoloading Holster, Lead from Gold, Threat Detector, Ambitious Assassin, Field Prep, and Underdog in the first slot with Disruption Break, Multi-Kill Clip, Unrelenting, Snapshot Sights, Danger Zone, Demolitionist, Vorpal Weapon, Swashbuckler, One for All, and Thresh in the second slot. The Borrowed Time will be dropping from Gambit matches and Rank Up packages, and this is a new Aggressive Frame Solar SMG. Once again with the significant perk pools we do have Heating Up, Tunnel Vision, Rangefinder, Grave Robber, Fourth Times the Charm, Killing Wind, Firmly Planted, Overflow, Surplus, Threat Detector, Feeding Frenzy, and Dynamic Sway Reduction in the first slot, with Adrenaline Junkie, Dragonfly, Thresh, Frenzy, Wellspring, Snapshot Sights, Demolitionist, Tap the Trigger, Swashbuckler, One for All, Rampage, or Surrounded in the second slot. Now though for World Weapon Drops, so these ones are going to come from Legendary Engrams, Rank Up Packages and things like that. There is the Vision, this is an Arc Omelon Adaptive Frame with a 3 round burst. It can roll Grave Robber, Surplus, Ambitious Assassin, Underdog, and Full Auto Trigger System as well as Killing Wind in the first trait slot, with Kill Clip, One for All, Swashbuckler, Disruption Break, Sympathetic Arsenal, and Elemental Capacitor in the second slot. The Class Swords from back in Year 1 are returning right here, so we've got Crown Splitter, a Void Aggressive Frame Sword, and it can get Relentless Strikes, Tireless Blade, Flash Counter, and Thresh, with the second trait slot having Vorpal Weapon, Whirlwind Blade, Surrounded, or Counter-Attack. Eternity's Edge for the Warlocks is returning, a Solar Vortex Frame, and it can roll Thresh, Tireless Blade, Energy Transfer, or Relentless Strikes, with the second slot seeing Counter-Attack, Flash Counter, Surrounded, and Assassin's Blade. The Quick Fang is returning, and of course this is a lightweight frame Void Sword for the Hunters, and it can roll Tireless Blade, Relentless Strikes, Energy Transfer, and Thresh in the first slot, with Assassin's Blade, on guard, flash counter, and one for all in the second slot. We have the Dioside Shotgun right here, a rapid fire frame void shotgun. It can get lead from gold, as well as dual loader, which reloads two shells at a time, but reduces reload speed. And then slide shot, surplus, grave robber, and hip fire grip. With the second slot seeing elemental capacitor, wellspring, unrelenting, one-two punch, demolitionist, or vorpal weapon. 
The stochastic variable is returning, the old FWC uh, SMG right here. It's arc damage and lightweight frame. And we have under pressure, Zen Moment, Killing Wind, Surplus, Ambitious Assassin, Feeding Frenzy in the first slot, as well as Unrelenting, Dragonfly, Multi-Kill Clip, Wellspring, Elemental Capacitor and Quick Draw in the second slot. The Memory Interdict Grenade Launcher is returning as well, an Adaptive Rain Void Grenade Launcher, and it's going to get Clown Cartridge, Autoloading Holster, Quick Draw, Impulse Amplifier, Underdog and Surplus in the first trait slot, with Chain Reaction, Wellspring, Danger Zone, Disruption Break, Unrelenting and Elemental Capacitor in the second slot. The Number is returning as well, quite a few FWC weapons interestingly. Once again coming from Rank Up Packages and Engrams, it's an Arc Precision Frame Auto Rifle, and it can roll under Pressure, Threat Detector, Underdog, Field Prep, Surplus and Killing Wind in the first slot, with High Impact Reserves, Sympathetic Arsenal, Unrelenting, Wellspring, One for All, and Multi-Kill Clip in the second slot. Finally, the Pleiades Corrector is also listed, of course another FWC weapon, and it's a lightweight Frame Scout Rifle with Solar Damage, able to roll Field Prep, 4th times the Charm, Surplus, Outlaw, Subsistence and Genesis in the first slot, with Demolitionist, Sympathetic Arsenal, Eye of the Storm, Elemental Capacitor, Wellspring, and Multi-Kill Clip in the second slot. The final weapon, of course, is the Null Composure. This is actually the Ritual weapon. A Void Rapid Fire Frame Fusion Rifle, and the role is Fluted Barrel, Projection Fuse, and then it has Feeding Frenzy, or Heating Up in the first trait slot, with Reservoir Burst, or High Impact Reserves in the second trait slot. And so definitely we've got a significant number of weapons for Season 14. And so let us know down below which ones you want to go after, as well as any standout roles that you can spot. But as always, I hope the video has been useful. A rating down below is also really helpful for the channel, guys. If you want to be kept up to date with all the latest D2 content, then feel free to hit that subscribe button. But for now, I appreciate you tuning in, and hope you guys have an awesome day.